Now, we're going to do Farm Fresh a little bit different today. 11.30, you'll hear this song, but for right now, we have Meredith Shaw with us in studio. Welcome, Meredith. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> I know you're you're pretty busy on a whirlwind coming from the CCMAs heading back to Toronto. That's right. I know. This is our last day of the, of the radio promo tour out here, and... Uh... You know, we very smartly booked it right after a crazy party weekend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting me at my best. <laughs> so that's why you got that big cup of Timmy's there beside that's right. you. That's right. It's the, the caffeine drip. And absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. So let's get to know you a little bit, as we often sure. do with Farm Fresh. Where are you from? You know, I'm from Toronto, but don't hold it against me. Oh, uh, no, no. I have, I have uh, Alberta roots, actually. My parents were both born in Alberta and uh, got lots of family uh, in, that, in that neck of the woods and, and also kind of out this way as well. So, yeah, from Toronto, started, I guess really doing music when I was about 14. That was my next question. How did you get into the music? Yeah, I felt like I had to come out as a musician. (laughs) Both my parents are lawyers, so (laughs) okay, it was like a, you know, total coming out party when I first decided. I was like, I think, oh man, I I think I'm a songwriter. I mean, I'm a singer too. Oh my (laughs) God, I gotta like tell them or something. Did they shake their head at you? No, they said, well, Meredith, we live in the same house with you. We know. (laughs) (laughs) We hear all your songs. So, uh, yeah, no, they've been, uh, they've been super supportive. My dad was actually just out helping uh, helping us drive uh, around a little bit to some of the promo dates. So they're the best parents in the music biz. Um, yeah, and then just actually my first recording experience was in Nashville. So I'm, I'm uh, now releasing the country single and doing the country thing. It kind of feels like I'm I'm uh, clicking my you know red ruby slippers and coming full circle all the way home because I've uh, I certainly have you know wandered a little bit i think as a lot of musicians do kind of getting influenced by different stuff i uh gordy johnson from big sugar has been a huge mentor of mine and got to write some big sugar songs one of them being the single very cool and... i'm also a big fan of gordy johnson are yeah. you well, absolutely yeah. i mean it's hard not to be he's kind of this mad creative genius and and, and he he picks sort of certain people that he likes that he finds and and, and I, he I'm, found you he found me i'm happy to be part of his collection you know? <laughs> his collection yeah. <laughs> i remember uh, i was talking to john angus mcdonald's of the tr- of the trues who actually produced some of my uh, latest stuff and he said gordy johnson has good taste in humans and i'm like wow. he does have good, good taste, taste in, in humans. humans it's cool because i've never really met anyone through him that i didn't think was pretty rad so yeah that's yeah. cool i know people like that too yeah they just they plug you into a network of good people and yeah. it's like how did i not know all these people before exactly uh now let's talk about your background a little bit like you mentioned sure. you kind of swerved back and forth there now you've studied opera and theater <laughs> How did you get into country music? Well, you know, like the you know lawyer parents background, <laughs> I, I went to university. Yes. Um, so what do you do when you go to university and you want to be a musician? You kind of study the music that's available. So I went to Queens and uh, actually met the guys from Bedouin Sound Clash at the same time. And there was a real great music scene happening in Kingston. So I was playing a lot of those clubs and... And then, yes, I mean, going to my opera classes the next day, I remember finally my, my coach was like, I think you have to choose, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't really do these arias and then go sing like, a, you know, a yes. Queen's Pub or something at night. I'm like, I choose the pub. Um, so, yeah, but I, I had a great experience at Queen's and then, and then from there, just through my start kind of in Nashville when I was about 14, 15, made a lot of those connections and it just had kept in touch and Country music was just sort of calling my name. I worked with, like I said, Gordy and toured with Big Sugar and then uh, got to work with Joel Plaskett, who, I, again, a Gordy connection, yep. who I just love. And uh, we co-wrote a bunch of stuff together and then worked with John Angus McDonald and uh, now working with Jeff Johnson out of Vancouver. And he did all the West Mac stuff and Dallas Smith. And so he's a... He's a good dude in this in this mm-hmm. country business, and I just kind of felt like, man, I think I'm writing country songs again, and and uh, and it turns out I am. So just very organically flowed that way without your knowledge. Very kind of. organically, yeah. yeah, and just feels really good to be sort of back to where I started. Now, what did you listen to growing up? Were you a country fan as a as a child, or did you listen to a little bit? I imagine in Toronto, everything is at your disposal, right? Yeah, there's a lot going on. My dad liked Neil Diamond, so there was a lot very of Neil nice. Diamond early on. Um, so the the show part of music. Music definitely uh, came to me early, but no, like Simon and Garfunkel was played loud and proud in my house, and then uh, and then I fell in love with you know Emmylou Harris and Reba McIntyre and there Martina McBride and all those big sort of powerhouse female vocalists. Yeah. Um, and I think at first I was singing along with them just to see if I could do it. You know, I'm yeah. like, can I can I can I hit that note? Can I hit it tomorrow? You know. But uh, and then since then, you know, really. My tastes have have gone all over the place. Right now, I'm I'm really into uh, 
a lot of the the country stuff that's that's happening right now. Like I love uh, Little Big Town. It was so cool that they were on the CCMA this year. Um, but you know, but I I listen to a ton of reggae now because of my Big Sugar connection. Yes, so of I have course, a yeah. big reggae vinyl collection and. So it's it's pretty varied, but uh, but you know if it's a good song and a good groove, it's got me. Very cool. All right, now in addition to being a singer and a songwriter, you're also a radio DJ. <laughs> you model. You have your own custom stationery company, and what? Apparently, sleep one hour a night. You like, know, <laughs> you're pretty busy. Well, there's the Timmy's thing again, right? Yeah, it's that caffeine trip. I don't know. I think as an artist, especially in this day and age and in Canada too, you got to figure it out. You know, you got to make it work. And and I'm someone who's going to be in music my whole life, so I just have to. Sometimes music is going to pay the bills, and sometimes other things are going to. And yep. uh, I've I've loved, as you know, I don't need to tell you behind the microphone over there. Radio is pretty fun too. It's pretty fun too, you know, but like you said, you need to diversify in order to <laughs> yeah. pay the bills. Yeah, it's true. So you know, hopefully, luckily now, I mean, they're all kind of moving at at, at a pretty intense pace. So yeah, sleeping a little more would be would be nice. But you know, they're they're good problems to have. So absolutely. Yeah. Now, something else that you spearheaded that I left out of that list intentionally is girls who believe. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yes, what is this all about? Tell us all about it. Yeah, well, I had a, I have a song called Girls Who Believe, and it was really, I wrote it about uh, just the importance of female mentorship that I've had in my life. And, you know, as we were discussing kind of my journey, I, I wouldn't have been able to keep going at various points if I didn't have people around me saying, you know, try it again, do this. I think you can do this. So I really wanted to create a group um, that was that kind of voice for other girls, because um, I really feel like that's the difference between really doing what you're meant to do and, and maybe doing something else. And I think that's pretty powerful. So uh, I've created Girls Who Believe. We do a festival in the fall. We raise money for a great charity called Girls Inc. And I just bring together, you know, my favorite female artists of the year. And, and we do a great show. And we bring up a, a young singer-songwriter. We do a contest thanks to our sponsors. And You should keep doing that. I think that's Thank good. You. Uh, yes. Now, it's obvious that each of these pursuits comes from a place of passion. A lot of passion in your music as well? Definitely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I write songs from experiences that I've had um, and experiences that I've overheard other people have in coffee shops. <laughs> if you ever hear me, like, <laughs> leering. Justice, yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm like, hmm, that sounds like an interesting breakup moment over there. Uh, <laughs> let me just take up my iPhone. So uh, if I hear a song on the radio that reminds me <laughs> yeah. of a breakup I had, she was in the cafe hey, the whole time. That's that redhead. <laughs> yeah. So, no, a de certainly a lot of passion and and I'm, I'm, like I said before, I mean, I'm really about the groove. I like to hook into something like that. So I'm into, to, you know, ballads and, and, and crying into your pillow like the rest of us. But, uh, but I, I like some upbeat songs. I, and I think, you know, women in, in country music, especially in Canada, I think we've been known for that with the Shania Twains and the Carolyn Don Johnsons. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of spirit and spunk going on. So I, I hope to, to follow in some of those footsteps. Now, you mentioned that you worked with a lot of other Canadian artists, like mm -hmm. Gordy Johnson, like yeah. Joel Plaskett. Again, two of my favorites. Totally. Uh, who's your favorite Canadian artist right now? Any genre, any platform? Oh, man. That's so huge. Well, I know. It's, I thought about <laughs> the question myself. I'm like, I couldn't answer I wouldn't this. Answer I hope that. she can. Well, you know, the two names that come to mind right away, uh, I, I was so stoked that Jan Arden was hosting the CCMA uh -huh. because Jan Arden, to me, has been, uh, though she doesn't know it, she's been a force of sort of a mothership for me um, as I move through this industry. I just think she's so awesome at being who she is all the time in every moment and sometimes it gets her into trouble and sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah you know and sometimes it's uh it's exactly where it should be but it's always all of her and I think she's much beloved for her music but also for who she is so I really admire that in her and then uh just uh, uh, again sort of a good friend of mine but I gotta mention him Tim Chasen is a fantastic artist from the east coast uh, he was just here at the CCMA and he's gonna have a record coming out in 2015 I wrote a couple songs on it um with him and He's just a uh, tremendous talent. So if people don't know about him yet, you should check out Tim Chasen. Tim Chasen. Well, he's handsome. Yep. And he's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I haven't heard of him, and that's why I ask these questions. There you go. Because you never know who someone else is listening to. Could be the next big thing, right? So, well, you know what? That name is going to be. So, all right. yeah. We'll remember Speaking this day. Speaking of next big things, <laughs> let's talk about your single, uh, Better Than This. Who did you work with on this one? Well, I worked at, I co-wrote it with a, a regular co-writing partner of mine named Pat Patrick Ballantyne, who actually met through Gordy. He, he wrote a number of the Big Sugar uh, hits in the 90s. And uh, we, though Patrick lives in Oakville, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump from Toronto, we write our best songs in Nashville. So <laughs> we really like to spend money to write songs. So we went to Nashville and we actually wrote this one together. We wrote better than this. And then uh, I met Jeff Johnson at the CCMA last year and 
always just liked him. You know, I really like to work with people that I just kind of like, whether we're making music <laughs> or having a beer. I just sort of like to like you because music is, is hard enough. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the hang's got to be there. So I just liked Jeff. And um, and then sure enough, saw all the work that he'd been involved in. And, and it's I mean, it's sounding good and radio's liking it and all that stuff. So we hooked up and uh, we did better than this in Vancouver. And we had uh, Dal Smith's bass player, uh, Scotty Chops. He mixed it. And we had Shania Twain's fiddle player on it. And Sean Vareau from Wideth Mason uh, plays cool. lead guitar on it. So lots of talented people involved. Yeah, a veritable uh, who's who of all, you know. Canadian session musicians. Well, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> and now Jeff and I are working on the album. Um, and that'll come out in uh, in 2015. So. All right. We'll get to the album in a second. Cool. What's the song about? This song? Well... You know, that whole relationship thing mm -hmm. that we all go through. A common theme. A common theme, but this one a little bit different. It, you know, the guy just doesn't completely suck in it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give a little bit of hope, you know, because we like the guys. So it's not, it's kind of that point in the relationship where you're like, where did we get, how did we get here? We were so good. We are better than this. You're better than this. I'm better than this. Like who we are as a couple is just better than the, the stuff that we're going through right now. So there's a little, little bit of hope in there. It's like you got one more shot. You don't need to be perfect, but you got to be better. <laughs> so that's what it's all about. I'm sure you weren't the first lady to say that no, either, you know, right? I think, I think the girls are going to get me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, album to follow, or when is there a release date set for this? Or? Album to follow. Uh, we're working on it right now. We want to get the single out, um, and then we're going to probably have another one in, in early next year, and then uh, and then the album to follow. So we are we are on process with the, uh, with the album, and um, yeah, got some great co-writers on it. Like I mentioned, Carolyn Don Johnson, uh, working with the Stellas mm -hmm. as well. Um, uh, get in the studio with Michelle Wright and so really great co-writers so I feel very lucky to uh, to have these country experts you know kind of hold my hand through this process and um, yeah so I think the album's going to be some kick-ass songs like the, like this one like better than this and then you know some ones to, to get a little get a little red wine and well, the, a little teary on the as well. support group behind you sounds fantastic. I mean, you're you're connected, yeah. you're plugged in. I think this is just the first of many chats we'll have in oh, the future. Cool. Well, right? I'm thrilled. I hope so. Well, I, cross I, our fingers. Yeah, though. absolutely. I'm gonna stop talking now. You, <laughs> you can just keep saying that. Uh, any future tour plans? Yeah. Well, we want to come back out this way. We've just been, um, you know, visiting lovely radio stations, but we haven't been playing shows and seeing people that we like to play for. So we're going to uh, to get back out west as soon as we can. Um, you know, got to go back home to Toronto and get out to Vancouver and make the record and do all that kind of stuff. But as soon as we've got most of the record done, I, I want to get on the road. We uh, we love playing live and getting people to sing along and, you know, having some drinks and all that good time. So that's we're, that we're, passion we're, thing. That's that again. passion <laughs> thing. Yes, exactly. So in the meantime, though, people want to learn more about you, about your music. You get an idea of when your tour is going to come this way. All on the website? All on the website. Yeah. MeredithShaw.com. And I'm the same on Twitter and Instagram and all that social crack stuff all that social stuff <laughs> yeah it's social crack stuff exactly yeah. well put mayor of the show i want to thank you so much for coming thank in thank you for uh, having me Corey, bringing your guitarist with you although yes. we didn't get to utilize them we'll put you guys to work back in the uh, okay cool. back in the pit with the sales weasels and Ooh, stuff like that nice okay we'll do that <laughs> all right meredith shaw better than this that single coming up at eleven thirty in the farm fresh song of the day